Hi, I'm Christian Weber, founder and CEO of ShiftPod by Advanced Shelter Systems. The shift pod was born out of Burning Man, one of the top five uh, least hospitable deserts for humans to exist. And we created the, the shelter for that environment and very quickly it's been adopted by search and rescue teams, uh, law enforcement, sheriff's offices, emergency response. We worked with EDC and they donated a thousand units to the Bahamas, so we have a thousand families living in the shift pod down there right now. We have them all over the world in different disaster areas, Mexico City, Japan, Ecuador, Happy to be a part of the response community and, and helping people all over the world. Going into the XL, the ShiftPod XL, we got five ShiftPod 2s connected to it. It's the first time we've actually set it all up like this. Until now it's been on paper, but come on in and check it out. So we'll use this as kind of the living room and common space, and then everybody has their own pod off of each section here. So we got plenty of space in here for couches or tables, cooking area, bar in this case. There's a tunnel system connected over here. We've got storage space in here. Don't mind the mess. It's our heater tubing. Sleeping space in here. This is a queen size X-Ped bed, super comfortable. Yeah, I have the X-Ped bed too, they're, they're awesome. Yeah, yeah, super, super comfortable, easy to inflate. This is one of five units that's connected to the XL. This is the ShiftPod 2. Uh, now the ShiftPod 3 is coming out soon, uh, which is really exciting. It'll be all carbon fiber, carbon fiber hubs, carbon fiber spars, and it'll be the same size, so everything's backwards compatible. Yeah, we're really excited about it. It's gonna be about 12 to 15 pounds lighter. How did these connect to each other? With this tunnel? tunnel right here, come on through. The tunnel system velcros in on either side. It's not waterproof. The water, if it rains, will actually, some a little bit will drip down the sides of the wall here and then go out underneath the floor. It's not really possible to make it waterproof, but it is out of the wind. It protects you and gives you a nice little tunnel space to get through. Uh, it gives you a lot of storage space here also for like, you know, flats of water or whatever you need to store in here. If you leave the windows or the doors open or even the windows open, the heat can transfer back and forth and you get some good circulation. You put it, the heat in one side and then uh, have your return coming out the other side and it creates a nice flow. Yeah, so what's the average setup time for one of these? So yeah, for the shift pot two, my record is 22 seconds. It was, uh, that was beaten by a guy at EDC. He did it in 17 and change. Most people set them up in two to five minutes. The XL takes about five minutes to set up and then each uh, tunnel takes about five minutes. So, right. you know, 30, 45 minutes, an hour, you have a five bedroom condo. We're actually coming out with uh, different uh, shade structures that you can add on and create a lot of common space outside. Um, you can tie different units together. So if you have five or 10 friends all getting together and going camping, you can create a, a shade structure over the top of your encampment. And it's all custom, you know, built for the shift pods. Very nice. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Christian, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. We've got a lot of great people here with these shift pods. I slept in a shift pod last night and it was phenomenal. I can never camp again shift. like norm. Shift. 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 Hard T. Hard T. F. It's a hard T. Hard F. Well, hard F. <laughs> shift pod. It's a shift pod and it, it was, was fantastic. Great. So after being around and inside it, as well as giving the full tour, I wanted to get first-hand experience in breaking down camp of this shelter. So what I decided to do is record myself in real time and breaking it down. Now there's two caveats to this. The first one is that anytime you see a cut in between videos, it's because I am repositioning the camera or I am taking out any fillers that have nothing to do with breaking down this camp. Second, this is my very first time breaking down this shelter as well as not having the manual or instructions in breaking it down. And I purposely did this because I heard that this is a very intuitive design in terms of setting up and breaking down. Now there are a couple of observations I've made in regards to the shift pod. 
Because of the material that is used for this shelter, including the insulation layer that is inside the tent, uh, this is very thick in terms of the material. With that said, the benefit of that is that you are able to insulate the ambient temperature inside the tent, whether it be the cooler temperature when it's hot out or the warmer temperature inside when it's cold out. Now, there were a few days where the temperatures did reach 90 degrees at this camp area, and I stepped inside the tent to see how the ambient temperature inside would be, and it was definitely noticeably cooler inside. Now, with that comes the fact that this is going to be a heavier tent as a result. So it is definitely a trade-off and it is something you should consider as well. Now there's no doubt about it that this tent is very roomy. I'd say you could probably fit four to six people in there and still be relatively comfortable. And when I did step inside, being 5'11", I was able to stand up fully with still some additional headspace inside the tent. Now as a result, when you do break down this tent, it does mean that the pack size is going to be relatively long. I believe it's around six feet. So that is something to keep in mind if you are going to haul something like this around. Now, as I expected, the breakdown of this camp was really easy. Because of the intuitive design, it's pretty self-explanatory in how this is broken down. So popping the sides inwards after removing the guidelines from the ground and then popping down the ceiling, it allows you to then easily lay it down on the ground and fold it up. And based on this design, it is fairly obvious to me as to why it is used as storm shelters and rescue shelters in general. It is very stout, strong, and when all the lines are guyed out, it is definitely a formidable opponent against harsh weather. So for those of you looking for a very high quality shelter that doesn't require mounting a tent on your rig, such as a rooftop tent, and you want a base camp where you could set up your shelter and venture away, this may be the shelter for you. Now it may be fairly obvious, but I do want to point out and say that this is definitely a shelter that will get some attention. While we were set up in this camp area in the middle of the desert, we did have some people in dirt bikes, quads, side-by-sides come by and ask what these shelters were. So this tent definitely does garner a lot of attention. So that is also something to keep in mind as well. With that said, I want to thank Christian for giving us this tour and getting a better understanding about these shift pods and also the background of where these came from. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did like it, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave it in the comment section down below. As always, thanks for watching, so be safe, take care, and I'll see you next time.